France against Fiji Rugby World Cup warm-up match this weekend. Folks, France suffered a couple of pretty serious injuries in their last game. Fiji in red-hot form coming off the back of that Pacific Nations Cup success. We will go through the lineups that have been chosen for the game this weekend, uh, some of the stats and uh, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. We obviously hope both sides get through this one relatively unscathed. France's injury toll with Intermark and Bai thus far is uh, not great, but they do have a couple of guys returning into the squad, which is also pretty pleasing. Um, interestingly, the last five results from these two sides don't seem that recent. If I am not mistaken, the most recent result is that French win. No, Fijian win over France in France back in 2018, which a few of these... Fijian guys played in, like uh, Rad Radra, I think uh, Matsavesi played in that game, uh, Tuisova I think played in that game, for the French squad it was vastly different, I think you did have the likes of a Marchand on the bench, although he's not playing this week, Dupont I think was on the bench, but it was very much, I think Fiku is maybe the only starting guy who we're kind of familiar with now, but even he's not playing this week, so it was yeah, very much that kind of old Picamoles and um, that, that generation of players that was playing uh so very very different a lot has changed since 2018 and then the results prior to that all the french wins are even older i think we're going back to 2001 if i'm not mistaken so these sides haven't played a heck of a lot in recent times so take that kind of recent record with uh with a bit of a grain of salt for the french i mentioned they have had some injuries but they've also managed to rotate the squad around a wee bit to give some guys a, uh, a bit of a chance. Wardi, Malvaka, and Antonio. That is your starting front row. And that's a bit of beef uh, in that French front row. Wardi and Malvaka come into the side after not playing last week. Antonio was on the bench last week. This week he gets a start. And they've got Verag and Willemza there in the second row. It's great to see Willemza back. He's been kind of on the road back from an injury for quite some time. I think he played well, from the bench the other week, right? But... Uh, to see him get a start is very pleasing because he certainly adds, speaking of a bit of extra beef, uh, a bit of beef into that French second row. And Virag, like I mentioned, up from the bench. Aldrit is still there as captain at number eight. He's alongside Creton and Cros. Was it Cros? I always forget whether to add the S or not. But um, there's a lot of tackling uh, in that French back row with uh, with Cros and Creton there. So um, that's pleasing. Obviously, there's no Olivon this week. He's had a blinder last week, didn't he? He was amazing. But, um, yeah, they need to rotate the minutes around, so that kind of makes sense. And uh, there's also no Dupont this week. I guess they don't want to risk him two games in a row after Intermark getting injured. Again, maybe they just need more minutes into the guys. So Luku gets a start alongside Astoy, and uh, Jalibier is in the squad as well in the 23 jersey. So, yeah, man, um, the Intermark one still really burns. It really, really, really burns. I think even non-French fans... Uh, pretty upset that that guy has, um, you know, not going to feature at the World Cup. But uh, Astoy and, and Jelly Bear will have to step up. Good chance for Astoy to get some game time prior to the World Cup rather than it happening during the World Cup. Uh, Dante and Vincent are your 12 and 13 combo. So Dante continues on uh, from last week and Vincent comes back into the 23. So he's another one who hasn't had a heck of a lot of game time in this Rugby World Cup cycle. Spent a lot of the time out injured. So... Good chance for him uh, to stake a claim for the squad. Biel Biari is back into the starting lineup after featuring two games ago and on the bench last week. And he's looked really sharp. There seems to be a plethora of good outside backs in France. So uh, he seems like a really dangerous attacking-minded player. Um, he's going to be up against it with some pretty similar-minded Fijian players. But yeah, we'll see what he can do in their Moifana is there on the other wing, and then Jaminer with that big boot of his uh, is there at fullback in the place of Ramos. Uh, bench wise, Bougoui, Baptiste Gross, and Lacayette are your front row replacements. Uh, Bougoui and Gross were there last week, so that's kind of steady. Likewise, Chalaroux is there. Flamont drops to the bench. I guess he's kind of loose forward cover, potentially lock cover alongside Makalou, and it's just the two backs in Serran and Jalibert, like I mentioned. So uh, Makalu may be called upon to fill in with the backs if there was an early injury to kind of one of the outside backs. I'm not sure how much versatility. I mean, Moifano is pretty versatile. He can kind of shift around if needs be. Uh, I'm not sure if Jalibert or Astoy has played much of anything but 10. I think Jalibert can slot in at fullback if needs be. But 
yeah, we'll kind of have to see how things go. Fingers crossed, no injuries, but, you know, nobody can control that. For Fiji, I mentioned they've been in great form. Really, really great form. They they cruised through the Pacific Nations Cup easily better than Samoa, Tonga, and even Japan, who played all their games at home. So uh, Fiji are in a very good place, but playing France in France is going to be a different test from playing Japan in Japan. And, uh, yeah, this will maybe give us a better idea of where they're at. Again, they have chopped and changed half the squad. Simon Rawalui has not really played a steady squad week after week, and that theme continues here. Maui, Ikanaveri, and Dogia are your front row. So Maui keeps his place. Ikanaveri is up from the bench, and Dogia is back into the 23. So it's kind of steady, a part change, and a full change. Uh, Ikanaveri is a dangerous, dangerous player uh, from anywhere five meters out from the line. If the French uh, are even half a second too late and trying to get the tackle on that guy, he will make them pay. Nasila Sila and Tiriki Veta are your locks, both of them up from the bench uh, from last week. And then Deren Alangi switches to six. Vilimata is at seven and Bottier is at eight. French fans will know all about Bottier from his time at, uh, at La Rochelle. They may be a bit less familiar with Deren Alangi. He played his entire season with the Drua. But if they know him from sevens, will certainly be familiar with how much of a game breaker he can be with his kind of ability to find half a gap. And uh, Mata uh, usually plays number eight, but I guess he can play number seven, or him and Bottier could even switch. Um, but with his offloading game, is also very dangerous. Lomani uh, is up from the bench to start at nine, and then Caleb Munt's drew a teammate is there at ten. Munt's job is just to get the ball to the other guys. He doesn't need to do anything flash. Uh, kick his goals potentially. Ran Randra will captain the side from 12, and then Masi is there at 13. So that is, despite the fact there's no night at the level, that's still a really dangerous looking midfield. And then the wings, man. Habosi with the gas and Tui Silva with the power. Very, very, uh, very dangerous. And then Mangala uh, there at fullback. Um, it's a pretty good looking French side. French side, Fijian side, you would have to say. Matavesi is there on the bench, so a bit of kind of. Uh, experience there to um, to come on if needs be. Ravai and Tagi uh, there too as your front row replacements. Mayana Vanua is your lock replacement and then Tuisui is there too. So both those guys drop to the bench. Kurivoli is there. Wainingolo and Draw Sese as well. So um, yeah, I am really, really, really curious to see how many realists did I say um, to, to see how Fiji goes, man. They're number ninth in the world at the moment. That's as high as they've been for, for a bloody long time. So that just shows you the kind of form they're in. Um, Stats-wise, interestingly, France last week conceded a lot of clean breaks against Scotland. Scotland looked one game sharper, but we have to remember that France were bringing a lot of their top string guys back for their first kind of test game in a long time. So maybe that was part of it. But as always this year, they've been quite happy to play without the ball. Um, and they're very, very dangerous on kick return. Fiji's not a side that kicks it a heck of a lot, but I mean, last week, what was it? Um, Scotland kicked it. France took a quick line out and the next minute Olivon was scoring a try. So if you are going to kick to that French backfield, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, their goal kicking has been good. The French, I don't think they've missed a kick in the last three games. Uh, but remember, Ramos is not there. So uh, it may be on Jamini, uh, to um, to kind of find that rhythm with the boot. But it has been an area of strength for them. For Fiji, as I mentioned, they've been coming out of the blocks firing if my count is correct they've scored in the last three games 50 points in the first quarter of the game the first 20 minutes and then i think it's just only over 50 in the remaining three quarters so they score the vast majority of their point, points in that opening 20 minutes so if you can hold them out for that opening 20 you're probably going to stand a bit of a better chance and that's across a three game spread anyway which is not a heck of a sample but still uh and they are averaging more than five meters a carry Remember, four is good. Ireland gets like three point something meters a carry because they go through a lot of carries. Anything around four is good, and Fiji's at five, so they are a very, very dangerous team, ball in hand. And across the last three games, they've had 19 clean breaks and conceded a mere six, plus they can score more tries. So there's a lot to like about the Fijian side, but France across the last few years have also been just one of the best sides in the world. So it's got a lot uh, a lot to like about it. The average score for what it's worth across these last five is 45-15. But that includes a couple of games which were real blowouts, like 77-10, 61-18. The more recent games, if you can call them that, since 2010 anyway, have been more kind of like 
you know, uh, 40 to 15, 30 to 12. So those are the French ones. And the last one was 21, 14 to, to Fiji all those years ago, back in 2018. Uh, predictions wise, the bookies are saying France by 14 and the rugby, for rugby forecast algorithm is going a step further saying by 17. It is on from Nantes, which is good. It seems like they're moving the games around a wee bit for this French kind of pre-rugby World Cup season, I guess, to build a bit of hype uh, before the rugby World Cup instead of just playing everything inside the France. Nika Amosha Kelly, the Georgian, is the referee. Fingers crossed we're not talking about him about this game. Um, just let's go. No red cards, no injuries, and uh, a free-flowing game rugby. It's on at 9.05 local time, which is like 7.05 for us, those of us here in NZ. Uh, nice morning breakfast game. Have some breakfast and watch some Fiji and France, two of the most exciting teams in the world. Uh, if you find something to do between now and then, you can see me walking around Wuhan, checking out the old French concession. France had a concession in Wuhan way back in the old kind of colonial period. So I had a wee walk down there. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link up in the description. Two cents on tour. It's not rugby, but hopefully it's something a bit interesting. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. And um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.